Good morning and welcome to the Geo Coast. Here we are in Crosshaven, which is a small town on the western side of Cork Harbour. And today we are going to visit the newest Irish research vessel called Kiri, which was named after one of the first Irish marine geologists, Raymond Kiri. And here we are with Sean Cullen from the Geological Survey of Ireland. Good morning, Sean. Good morning, Max. So what can you tell us about this vessel? Well, we had it built uh, in 2006 uh, down in South Africa and she was built down there and brought up to Holland on a container ship and we fetched her from there early 2007 and she's been here working now around the Irish coast for the last three years uh, on the Infomar pro project which mm -hmm. is a collaboration with the Marine Institute for the seabed mapping around the coast. And we can see that this boat is built in the form of a catamaran is it to add extra stability to the vessel? There's a, several reasons. Uh, the, the catamaran can go into shallower places because the draft is usually reduced. It is more stable. And we also had this idea to include all of the sonar equipment in a retractable unit that comes up between the hulls. And that allows it to keep clean and to do maintenance on it. And generally, it's, it just makes life a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And how shallow can it work? Well, her draft with the equipment down in the water is about 2.1 meters. Uh, she can, with, with, with it re retracted, we can go to 2 meters. But um, our general work is up to the 5 meter contour because if it gets shallower than that, it becomes a problem for the amount of coverage for the effort. Okay, Max, well, it's, it's great weather today and it's flat calm. It's perfect survey conditions. So I guess we should get on board and get going. Right, so here we are on the bridge and we are heading outside Cork Harbour to do some seabed mapping. And in a minute, Sean and the crew will show us the equipment that they use for mapping the seabed. Right, Sean, so you mentioned that sometimes or most of the time when you're doing the survey you steer the boat using the autopilot and can you please explain to us how does it work? Yeah, well basically it has a GPS input with a compass and it takes our very accurate navigation system and uses that to steer along a, a predetermined course. That course can be set either by manually entering it ourselves here as when you're steering the boat or the surveyor Ronan could put in a, a line on the navigation software and the vessel will automatically track that. Does it, is it always on a straight line? No and interestingly enough we've just developed a, a new little bit of software um, that will take the previous multi-beam coverage and calculate a new curved line oh, right. and that curved line will, 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 will be followed by the autopilot as well. Ronan, so can you please tell us about the surveying equipment on board? Sure. So I guess the uh, one of the key features of this vessel is that we control all our surveying equipment from up here on the bridge. A uh, big advantage to that is that the surveyor and the skipper are standing side by side and looking at the same displays. So uh, it makes for very very good communication and uh, cuts out a lot of the potential for misunderstandings mm. that might arise on a bigger vessel say. Uh, this screen here that you see here the skipper is usually looking at this um, just to kind of QC his positions and everything like that but uh, this is where we control the multi-beam software so the multi-beam is the key survey system on board and when we're online we're looking at the seabed image to see does anything of interest crop up we're looking at the cross track error and basically just looking at some of the displays here to make sure that uh, the multi-beam data that we're taking is of sufficient quality over here on this console then we have our key navigation system which is uh, Quincy software and this is interfaced with nearly all the other navigation systems or nearly all the other survey systems to provide navigation to them so the positions that all the different survey systems are reading they're all synchronized um, another key unit is the PAS MV so we kind of keep check of everything on this laptop we can flick from one computer to another to another to another remotely using this laptop and again we keep a good QC quality check on um, the positioning which is essential 
multi beam and then again where we are in terms of navigation the uh, positions we're getting for the vessel here are probably accurate to about 50 centimeters so when we're in close to uh, the coast we're going to be looking at what the old chart is saying we're going to be looking at our previous coverage and we're going to be looking at our current grid and our current grid really is the big safety margin as we're going along here in a shallow area we're going to always try and stay on just on the outside of our previous line and that lets us always know what the depth below us is so we can carry out this work safely I'll show you very quickly as well some other kit that we have this is our sub bottom profiler it's a chirp system and this kind of lets us see what we're looking at so we can see that we're in about 20 meters of water and it looks like a very hard seabed to me here but I can see from the multiple that maybe there's a covering of sand this is kind of what we expect to see from the bathymetry that we're looking at here too so right so let's have a brief tour around the Kiri as we out at sea outside Coral Harbour so we came way out the up deck and we have different sampling equipment that is used for taking seabed sediments to ground to the remote sense with the beam data so if we go here you see that there's which I used for launching the divers. Now let's go to the front of the vessel. Here we have the crane, which is used for moving equipment around the boat. Here we have some fire safety equipment. As you may see, like the boat is made of aluminium. It's not painted, but it's marine uh, aluminium, which is rust proof. So it's very rigid, very solid boat. Like. safety equipment here right here we have these benches and under these benches we have again like safety equipment in the form of life jackets here we have the ropes for tying the boats when you dock in port and from here we can enter the bridge Right, Sean, so now that you showed us how you do the survey, now could you please show me how to actually drive the boat? Okay, the, the, the first thing to remember is that we work in the real world here, so you have to keep a good lookout all the time. But at the same time, you're looking at the survey equipment. So on this screen here, you can see the little green boat there, and it's heading in this direction. So what we want to do is bring the boat around here and pick up this line, and follow it back into Cork Harbour. Okay? okay. So to do that, it's quite simple. At the moment, she's driving on a steady course with the autopilot. Okay, she's on 146 degrees, and she's she'll maintain that until we change it. Now, I can just slowly turn her using the autopilot by adjusting the course. Okay, and you can feel there that it's a, a few the clicks. Is yeah, and, but you can feel the, the actual button here, it just clicks for every degree, and you do it by feel. Uh -huh. So every click is one degree? It's just oh. changing by one degree, yeah. Uh -huh. But that can be quite slow to do, okay. right? As you can see there, we haven't moved very far around. So what we do is we put it into standby mode, okay? So we just take it off of autopilot, okay? Now that that's not doing anything, she's just driving on her own. We have here uh, an indicator of the rudder, in which direction the rudder is. So if you press the joystick over to to starboard, okay. So okay. I'm but and yeah, now stop and leave it in the middle because now you'll see the rudder. Sorry, just go again. So go to starboard. Starboard means right in marine language. That's correct. Yeah. So now your rudder is two stops over. And if you go up to four. four what that means that's four stops and then just leave it now okay and you'll see she's starting to turn you can see it in the real world and you can see it up mm -hmm. here <coughs> Sean so could you please tell me how do you speed up the boat okay so the the throttles are electronic throttles so what you do here is you just push the two sticks simultaneously together by holding both handles to and forward. You push it forward you can hear the engine increase can I try it? yeah not too fast because okay slow down now because we have the equipment in the water uh -huh. so we can only do 10 knots with the survey equipment okay down. and what is our speed now over our 10 speed knots speed now is 8 knots uh -huh. 
So when we need to go fast back to shore, we have to stop the boat, raise the, the survey equipment, mm -hmm. and then we can go full speed 20 knots. Okay. So the actual multi-beam transducers, they can be raised up? They are retracted with and hydraulics, they, yeah. And they hang up in the air? Above they, the water, they sit huh? in between the hulls, yeah. Uh -huh. And then, so this little device is just for turning the right and left? Yes, so if you, if you bring it over to starboard again, start turning more to the right yeah so you, you right is starboard and then you can monitor it either on the screen or you can actually see outside that it's uh, turning mm -hmm. and what about obstacles around us for example if there's other boats in the area uh, do we have only visual control over them or do you have some sort of radar as well like which sees the boats no what we have is a, a thing called AIS which is an automatic identification system. And we program a little unit here, which sends a VHF signal with our position, and they have the same system on their boat, and it sends their position to us, and it's displayed on the navigation screen. We do have radar, but we only really use that in you know, poor light or at night. Uh, because it does use up quite a lot of energy. But this system is, on, is only for the big vessels, like if somebody is driving a reef, it's not going to be reflected. It won't show up on the snow. So that's why I say the most important thing is always keep a good lookout. You know, the real world is there, that's a virtual world. Mm -hmm. And what about the steering wheel? Like, would it do the same job as this little knob? Like? Okay, if I, if I just uh, make sure that that is in standby. Okay, now if you turn the wheel which size should I turn? Uh, maybe to, to port, to port. So I'm and you've got to turn it quite a lot and you'll see the indicator here has moved yeah and now we're moving all right the boat is actually moving the... yeah so you can steer like that and some people actually prefer that we have one skipper that only drives with the wheel but after 12 hours of steering with the wheel you soon want to remember that this is here <laughs> or the autopilot here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in an emergency, your first instinct might be just to use the wheel. Okay. So if a ship is coming at you or something. So just to conclude, there's three ways of steering the boat. Like. Yeah. Yeah, there's so the, auto, autopilot. the autopilot or the manual joystick and the emergency steering. Yeah. There is a fourth way, and, and that's to use the engines, but we only do that very slow in the harbor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you need to maneuver in a small space. Yeah, and then we can make the boat crab to the side or spin on itself. Mm -hmm.